Today's shooting comes not even two weeks after a deadly attack at a Buffalo grocery store. When horrific incidents like this happen again and again, we find ourselves thinking, what do we tell our children? Yeah, so joining us live in the studio this morning is Dr. Jody Gold. She's a psychiatrist and the director of the Gold Center for Mind, Health, and Wellness. Dr. Gold, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. You know, this really is so much to process. I mean, not only because it's back to back, right, these two shootings, but because we're dealing with kids. I mean, in elementary school, I have two young kids that are this age group, and I don't even know how to begin the conversation with them about what's happened. Well, obviously, it's a very hard conversation to have. Um, my advice for young kids, though, is to wait and let them come to you a little bit and to take and to, for you to take their lead. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we have this desire to come in and talk to them and give them all this information, which they really don't need. Yeah. The truth is, unfortunately, this is happening all the time. And when it when you're when it impacts your kids or when your kids find out about it, the first thing you need to do is find out what they're worried about. Mm -hmm. Don't offer them a, a lot of information. Sort of see where they are, because you might be surprised about what they're anxious about. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and you know, Hazel, you were saying earlier that you were watching it on television yesterday. I spoke to one of my friends last night who was watching it to be informed as a parent for right. their child, mm -hmm. and their child comes into the room, but it's a lot for a parent to process yeah. first before then addressing it with their kids. So how do you navigate all of that? That's a great point, because I think that the whole goal of parenting is, is following by modeling, right? So if parents are calm, kids will be calm. If parents are anxious and worried, kids will be anxious and worried. So the key at this point, since this is happening all the time, is for parents to process this. And obviously, it's hard to process it, because it's not like we can make any sense yeah. of it, right? But it is a part of our landscape at this moment. So as a parent, you need to be aware of it, and you need to process it, and you need to not let your anxiety become contagious yeah. to your kids. Yeah, that's really hard, because I mean, even when <laughs> my kids were coming up to me yesterday and I had tears in my eyes yeah. you know I had to lie about it and say it was allergies I mean because it's you know it's it's really hard to, for for you to pro when you imagine that it could be your own child I, know. I mean is there an age group though that we should start the conversation you know if a little one happens to see it mm. what when when do we kind of stay out of that conversation is there an age that we should say no. let's oh, just not talk about with it. the little little ones the elementary the really young ones the second third graders i would let i would not bring up the conversation unless it, unless it gets brought up which i think it will i mean i think the truth is if you have an ipad or a phone yeah. it get it pops up so i think the truth is it's going to come up mm -hmm. i think the key is how you address it you want to find out first what they know and then go with that the truth is as the kids get older you have to have a much more honest conversation though yeah. When they're young, you can sort of let, you know, you can kind of control the narrative a little bit and you can lie about the tears. But as the kids get older, you want them to know that you have empathy. I mean, we have so much empathy for these poor families and for these poor kids. What do you say to them if they're scared, though? Go to oh, school. Well, if they're scared and they're young, you need to tell them, you need to reassure them these are random acts of violence. I mean, they are growing in frequency, there's no question, but they're random acts of violence and we can't change our life because mm -hmm. of them. So they, they still have to go to school. They're still safe in their school, especially when they're young. I think what's really tricky is as the kids get older, you don't want to be, you don't want to act like you're lying to your kids, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When they're little, you should tell them that they're safe because they generally are safe. Yeah. It's, it's so tough because you're, you're saying second and third grade. These are fourth graders. I know. I fourth know. graders. And, then, so, and it almost feels like it's a fourth grader, so now they're going to bring it down to the second and third graders to start training them on drills and shooter situations, and it's a whole reality for somebody who is seven years old. Um, and so parents there are holding their kids a little closer as they go to school, and the kids are intuitive. They're like, why, all right, why are you holding me so tight? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about, though, with them feeling your anxiety. I mean, I think uh, shooter drills are, have already been going on in our schools in New York for a while. Mm -hmm. I think kids are accustomed to them, but they're kind of like fire drills. You sort of do them, and I don't know that it always makes everyone okay. so anxious. I think when you're holding them really tight, though, they get that you're nervous, and then mm. they get worried. Yeah. I mean, but the older kids are seeing this too, kids that are teenage e years, and they really have an understanding of what's going on. It's an 18-year-old shooter, someone who could be their classmate. How do you talk to them about what they're seeing? In some ways, that's a more complicated conversation yeah. because I think it's important not to tell them that they're completely safe all the time or to lie to them in any way because preteens and teens will see through that, right? Mm -hmm. So with the teenagers, you have to sit down and talk about violence. You have to talk about safety. You also have to talk about alienation and depression, yeah. right? So every one of these shooters, 
shooters. Every time for the last 10 years that I've been asked to be on the news, every single one of these shooters, there was warning signs. Mm. In fact, most of them, I know we don't know about this one yet, yeah. but most of the time you could have gone on their social media sites and you would have known it was going to happen. So what I tell teenagers is, first of all, if you have friends that you're worried about, yeah. friends that are acting weird or being aggressive online, you should report it. You should never blow it off. And then the next piece is, as a parent, if you think that your child is being alienated, has a change in behavior, is becoming depressed, mm -hmm. you need to get them help. Yeah. I mean, that is one of the things we can do. Yeah, you know, it, it, to your point, it's, it's 10 days ago there was a shooting in Buffalo, 18-year-old. Right. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday, an 18-year-old. Um, and social media playing a big factor. You heard Governor Hochul saying she's going to go after social media companies for those red flag warnings. There's so much to talk about, Dr. Gold, but we're out of time. <laughs> But thank you for being here to kind of help parents navigate this tricky situation. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah we appreciate you.